Okay, obviously some uh, difficult decisions were made by the organization today. This is the dysfunction I said that Baker Mayfield was going to have to overcome. Cleveland just fired their football coach. The Browns have also fired offensive coordinator Todd Haley. So I'm going to eliminate him on the getting the job list. Um, as of right now, this is what we know. Greg Williams is in charge. Freddie Kitchens is the OC. Uh, and the Browns, I guess, have a game this week. Baker Mayfield's rookie year is in the toilet. Give him the keys. He owns the place. And when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. This season is going to get worse. It's their fourth win of the year. Easy oh, this team can win no. seven, eight games. Uh -huh. I didn't say they was going to win those seven, eight games. Yeah. I told you, best case scenario, six. You know good well Cleveland's not very good. Win number five. Win number six, six. Doug. And the Browns are seven, seven, and one. Wow. The Browns not only matter again, they're exciting as hell. The Cleveland freaking Browns. Yes, I said it. They are America's team. They've gone from the worst team in the NFL to the most exciting team in the NFL. ESPN reporting today that the Browns have relieved Williams of his duties. Freddie Kitchens, the offensive coordinator for the second half of this season, on track to be named the Browns' ninth head coach since 1999. Dog Pound, you remember when I said I've never been offered a head coaching job? That's changed. I'm your new head coach, Freddie Kitchens. Let's roll. The video turned out pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I thought of a great thing to do. Like that night, I started to call you guys, let's do it again. But I was like, you know, I've never had my own bus before. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it now, so let's get on. Yeah, yeah. Get on the bus. I wish I'd have done that. Yeah. yeah, I think what you said was good, though. I yeah. think fans really liked it. Oh, uh, did they? Yeah. How do you get feedback from it somehow or something? Uh, basically, just comments and Where likes. Where did it go? Uh, it go? We put it on everything. It's like Twitter, Twitter Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. yeah, all those. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. All the shit I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where's Peter? Maybe he went downstairs. Okay. Because I think we're leaving. Okay. You ready, man? Yeah. You scared? No. All right. You still got my stuff? All right, perfect. I knew you would. I was against it at first, but I think I like it. Sometimes you got to try new things, Peter. You're like most of the coaches in this league. They don't want to try new things. They've got it all figured out. You don't evolve. I need to get one of those. I get you one, Jake. <laughs> yeah. Which car? <laughs> Lincoln. Lincoln. All right. Let me get that door for you there, mister. <laughs> <laughs> Kitchen. Oh. John, I feel like the president, dude. Right, Treat you like it. <laughs> uh, as long as they can get over the dialect, it'll be all right. I know you're uh, saying Peter's nervous. Are you nervous at all? No, I'm not nervous. I learned a long time ago, if you just speak the truth, and just tell them how you feel, you ain't gonna be nervous. Why would you be nervous? You know? Uh, I'm never gonna say something I don't believe, and you know, I always believe what I say and say what I believe, you know? Say that, let, let me just tell you a story. All right, so I pitched at the University of Alabama also. Batters, when they come up to the plate, they have a, a, a theme song, and the pitchers come out, they have a theme song. And uh, my theme song that I did not pick was Wild Thing. When I came out of the bullpen, I was a relief pitcher at Alabama my senior year, and they played Wild Thing. So, in saying that, it would not be Wild Thing. So, you know, uh, Southern Comfort Zone by um, Brad Paisley. Kind of like, you know, you move around in this business and, and you and I both know how I sound. 
and my words don't sound the same sometimes as yours. So uh, if you listen to the words of that song, Southern Comfort Zone, I mean, it kind of sums me up, you know? So Peter, you think, uh, can I look down at notes during this, or should I do it like public speaking 101 and just you're gonna go? Be sitting, you're going to be sitting on a dais right next to Dorsey. Dorsey will start. What if I want to start? Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, John, you did a pretty good job, man. Thank you. Yeah. I was going to ask you if I could drive. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Jimmy? How you doing, buddy? How, How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What's going on? I think it was mandated, though. Mr. D said that I needed to wear the same tie and the same coat I wore the other day. So I said something to Peter. I was like, well, that's good because I had to go buy it just for that interview. How you doing, Mr. D? Good week, Lester. Sure you don't want to change your mind, huh? Good week. <laughs> yeah. All right. Pleat, what are you doing, man? Hey, appreciate it, buddy. Thank you a lot. I don't get a hug, Pleat. I don't get a hug. I mean, hell. Come on. Come on. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. All right, buddy. What's up, man? Good to see you again, buddy. What's up, man? Good to see you again. Here we are. I ain't seen his ass in like five days. <laughs> we know that's not true. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, Don't get so sensitive on me. Uh, yeah. She's a kind too. I got to keep you regular. <laughs> All right. Where's your hat, man? I forgot it. Don't get it. You guys ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Mics are hot. I've never been more ready. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start out by saying that as an organization, we couldn't be more pleased with how this search process unfolded. But at the end of the process, Unanimously, we all felt that Freddie was the right fit for this organization moving forward. Freddie doesn't need any introductions here, ladies and gentlemen. He's a man that's dedicated his entire life to the game of football. He's been around some exceptional football guys. And Freddie has a great vision for this organization moving forward. I'm excited to work alongside of Freddie Kitchens, as I like to say, to awake the sleeping giants. It's my pleasure to introduce the 17th head coach of the Cleveland Browns, Freddie Kitchens. Thank you, John, for all those kind remarks. <laughs> Hopefully everybody agrees with you. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I really like stress to John and, and everybody involved in this search and, and interviewing these coaches, I wanted a thorough search. I really wanted to compete against everybody, all right? Since 1999, there's been ups and downs with this organization. And just like during the season, sometimes there's more ups and sometimes there's more down. There's been more downs than up, but that ends today. All right, I promise you that. Let's not fool ourselves. This game is about winning. Everything we do in the organization, from the football side of things, and moving forward with the organization, we're together. If you don't wear brown and orange, you don't matter, all right? This is the only organization that we care anything about is the one that we're at right now, and that's the Cleveland Browns. Seven, eight, and one. It drives me crazy that people are happy with seven, eight, and one. It drives me literally crazy, and if I was in a different setting, my vocabulary would demonstrate that. We understand that was an improvement, but under no circumstance is that ever gonna be acceptable. We only have one goal here, and that's to host the Lombardi Trophy. I went to the Super Bowl. I lost the Super Bowl. I never want to be in that position again, but every decision I've made since 2008 has been getting in position to do that. And I have been fortunate enough to be surrounded at this day and age, this time, right now, to moving forward in that direction. And that's all. Thank you very much. You want to hug him? Just so you guys know, John was supposed to wear his hat today too, but he didn't. <laughs> What do you 
You want that hug now, don't you? No. You want that hug now, don't you? We're going to do this <laughs> shot with NFL Network. Okay. Um, hey, you're cool doing it outside, right? It's not oh, yeah. It <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. We live in Cleveland. Okay, huh. All right. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Can't wait to see it rocking. Right in three, two, Thank you very much, Freddie Kitchens. Look around you here. Look how beautiful this oh, stadium is. looks with all the snow around. Can you imagine January football games here? Yeah, that's what I would say is it's not too beautiful because it's not crowded and packed and in January. And that's where we eventually want to get to is uh, playing games in January.